Hello everybody! I hope you're so excited because today is the day we're going to mix our very first sourdough. So the plan is that we are going to take our active starter that we fed yesterday, the 1 to 5 to 5 ratio, and we're going to use it to replenish a starter for the refrigerator to maintain our starter and to create a leaven. Then once our leaven peaks, we're going to mix our dough. We will bulk ferment our dough for a few hours and then we will give a cold ferment overnight in the refrigerator. And then tomorrow morning, we'll take our dough out of the refrigerator and let it proof and bake it and enjoy. It's going to be so good and so worth it. You're going to be so happy. So here's Bob, our starter at that we fed yesterday, the one to five to five ratio. And as you can see, it has perfectly peaked and it is about 12 o'clock right now and it's really well done well. It has risen and doubled and it's bubbly and active and it's just the perfect time for me to now create the leaven. So before we do that though, we want to make sure we take some of the starter out and replenish it because that's going to be the starter that keeps our starter maintained. If we use all of this starter and throw away the discard, we will have no starter left and we won't be able to maintain it. So what we're going to do is take out 10 grams of our starter and place it into a clean jar. And that's right, I said 10 grams, that's it. That's all, that's all you need actually to maintain it because we're going to be feeding it the one to five to five ratio because that will keep our starter at a low base acidity. So when it comes out of the refrigerator, it will have a little bit lower base acidity to begin with, which remember is very beneficial to us. So this will give us 110 grams of starter that's sleeping away in the refrigerator and ready to bake for us anytime we want it to come back alive. And remember, we're not actually putting all the yeast and bacteria to sleep literally, we're just slowing down the activity. It doesn't come to a complete halt. As you'll see, you'll be watching in your refrigerator every time you open the fridge, you'll see your starter there and you'll see that it still bubbles away. It just takes a lot longer. So I find it usually lasts about a week before it needs to be replenished. And I'm going to show you in another video how to do that. So take out 10 grams of starter from your active starter that you just built yesterday. Feed it 50 grams of water and 50 grams of flour. And if you go a few grams over, don't worry, just equal the water to the flour. Then give it a really good mix, cover it up, and don't put it in the refrigerator right away. The way I like to think of it as their starter is kind of like your baby. It's a human almost, right? And I've talked about this analogy a lot because I find it really easy then to understand and to remember. So never put your starter to sleep. It goes into the refrigerator to go to sleep, so to say. Never put it to sleep hungry and never put it to sleep full. Would you like to go to sleep with a really full stomach? Nobody does. And would you like to go to sleep hungry? No, I sure wouldn't. So what you want to do is after we do this replenishment here, we're going to leave it on the counter at room temperature for about an hour and even two. And then once it gets a chance to digest a little bit, kind of like after you eat a big, huge dinner, you know, you give a little bit an hour or so and you feel better. So I think of it that way. And then you can put it into the refrigerator. And when you take it out of the refrigerator and you want to mix another leaven to bake another loaf of sourdough, then you're going to replenish it again because you never want to take your starter out of the refrigerator and not give it a feed. You don't want to put it to bed hungry. So now just label your jar with the name of your starter or what it is basically and when you fed it. And if you make a mistake, I love these little top chalk writers. So easy. And I found these covers as well at Canadian Tire so I can use the chalk on it. So I write the name of the starter, the ratio that I fed it, and the date. And sometimes the time if I know I'm going to be um, feeding and creating another leaven. So today that's what I did because I knew I would be baking again. So then just put your elastic back on your jar and it's all ready to go. It's been replenished. It's going to have a little rest and then it can be rejuvenated in the refrigerator. And here's my starters. You can see they continue to bubble away in the refrigerator just a lot more slowly. 
So now that we've got our starter all tucked away and asleep, we can start working on creating our leaven. So go grab that leftover that we have that would have before been a discard. And now this beautiful active starter is going to create us our leaven for our dough. Now I'm free at this time, but if you happen to have noticed that your starter had peaked at the middle of the day and you were at work, for example, you think, oh no, what am I going to do? But I know you won't think that because you have learned that you can just give your starter a little snack. So if you come home from work, for example, and have noticed, oh darn it, I should have fed my starter a higher ratio. It's gone through all the food and it's already peaked and fallen. Just give it a little snack like we've talked about this whole two weeks and it will be good to go and peak sooner than you know it. So let's figure out how much we need to feed our starter in order to make the leaven. So the way we figure that out is we look at how much our formula calls for. So the formula we're going to use today calls for 150 grams of active leaven. This can also be called active starter or pre-ferment or starter that's been fed twice. Whichever way it's called, you basically need to figure it out the same way. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how much starter do we actually have in our jar. And I know that I fed my starter yesterday and I fed 10 grams of starter, 50 grams of water and 50 grams of flour. So I should have 110 grams of starter in my jar. So what I need to figure out is how many more grams do I need? Well, I need 150 grams, which I always round up 10 grams because I end up losing some every time. So I need 160 grams of starter. So that means I need 50 more grams than I have now. So I take that 50 grams and I split it into two. So I will need 25 grams of flour and 25 grams of water. And I figured that out because I know that my starter is made with equal parts of flour and water. So this is the way that you figure out exactly how much snack you need to feed your starter. At first you think, okay, well, what's a snack? How much should I feed the snack? And how big should it be? How much water, how much flour? But when you think about it, it really just depends on what the formula calls for. You need to make sure you have enough active starter or leaven made for what the formula calls for. So now that we have our starter fed our little snack and we know that we're going to have enough in order to fit our formula, I'll cover it back up and label it and include the time that I fed it. And another good thing to add to your sourdough journal is how long your starter takes to peak when you feed it a different snack, for example, or different ratios. And this way you're using your rise timer in order to benefit you and your schedule. I have talked a lot about how our bacteria and yeast colony, our wild yeast colony is going to be getting a lot stronger over time. This here is my original bomb. So I fed these both at the exact same time last night, last night, the exact same food amounts. So the exact same amount of flour, exact same amount of water in a one to five to five ratio. And look how much stronger my original Bob that is many years old versus my new Bob Jr. who is just brand new. This one is definitely still gaining strength in comparison to this one, but yours will be probably more like this one, but it will end up like this in a few years. And it will just keep gaining strength and it's just going to make you the most incredible bread. So stick to it. I just wanted to point out here that if you're having a really cold day and you just can't keep your starter warm and it just seems to be sluggish, you can use this little tip that a lot of people use to put your starter in the oven and just leave the light on. It's a really great tip to increase the activity. Well, I would say that it definitely worked giving it that little top-up feed. Check it out. This is our new colony of yeast that we have created. And there's my daughter. It has more than doubled. I'd say it's almost tripled. But look at my original Bob. So this is how your starter will look in a few years' time. So he's several years old now. So... But look at that. This is where it was when I fed it. And look, it's almost quadrupled in height. Pretty amazing. It's very active and very happy. Now you can see here as well, this is Bob Sr., my original starter. Look at that. Very, very active. And Bob Jr., the one I just made, very, very active as well. They're both looking like pillows, almost like a cloud you could bounce up on. 
And the leavens are definitely ready to bake with now to create our dough because look at this, you've got that domed effect on the side. Let's go ahead and mix our dough. And no video series is complete without bloopers, right? So as I was preparing this, oh, <laughs> thank goodness it's sticky, but it lost all of its height. Once your leaven is nice and active and reaches its peak, then meet me in the next video and we will mix our dough. See you there.